Cyclone Paul lingering over the Coral Sea on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. Now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for April 11th. <clears throat> so we have Paul, which is a fully fledged tropical storm now and was since yesterday, uh, peaking probably earlier at around 60 mile per hour winds. And Olga, which is completely dead really off the coast of Western Australia, but still having somewhat of a circulation at the low levels. In the Atlantic, it's 50 days until hurricane season and we have no areas of interest, which is good news. What you can clearly see though, is that big uh, storm over the eastern United States that's still producing severe thunderstorm warnings and one or two tornado warnings this morning. We'll have coverage on the en enhanced risk further north today, later today. And in the eastern Pacific, 33 days until hurricane season. And yes, we have marked a 20% area of interest near the Hawaiian Islands to the northwest, a potential system that could become uh, a brief subtropical cyclone as it moves northeastwards. We'll take a look at that properly in a moment. In the Western Pacific, there's nothing of note, but still uh, a little bit of uh, storms down there towards the uh, equator, as is typical. And in the North Indian Ocean, things looking very quiet there as well. Very little activity of any kind, really. Paul and Olga, not exactly the couple we had in mind, but there they are on the screen. Paul very close to the uh, eastern edge of the Coral Sea, and Olga is just on the coast there uh, near Exmouth. I don't know the name of that peninsula moving along the southeast, uh, southwest coast of uh, Australia. And in this Indian Ocean, nothing going on here as well. Things looking very quiet, no areas of interest to point out here either. Just a few little thunderstorms blowing up in parts of the Mozambique Channel and in the open ocean. And in the South Pacific, we are marking another area here at 20% right now, uh, a system that could also become a marginal cyclone uh, forming from non-tropical origins, uh, but that one looks, I would say, much less likely than even the Central Pacific system. So let's look at the only sure thing right now, and that's Paul, uh, a tropical storm here with estimated winds of around uh, 50 miles per hour. It's 327 kilometers from Herald's Beacon, a tiny island in the Coral Sea, uh, 411 from Yella, 425 from Tagula Island, 1058 from Mackay in Australia, and 1142 from Townsville. No watches or warnings in effect for this system. Bureau of Meteorology giving it Category 2 status and they think it is peaking as well or has maybe already passed peak and will weaken as it starts to move northwestwards. Let's check satellite imagery then right now. First of all, this system in the Central Pacific, i got to say, it's looking pretty decent as you look at it here. Uh, rumblings that it could become a subtropical cyclone as it moves generally northeastwards. All of that big bulk around it will shed itself a little bit and you'll start to see more of a circulation near the center and really lo looking at phase diagrams and looking towards the simulated satellite imagery, it appears to have an appearance that you might suggest could be nameable. Well, this is Paul right now, not looking as good as it did yesterday, still blowing up decent amounts of convection, but becoming increasingly heavily sheared. Now, that's really clear to see there on that western side with the very sharp gradient of cloud uh, showing that wind shear is a prominent feature here. Uh, Paul is going to be on a weakening trend now, and that will continue. And it looks pretty clear to me that it will not survive anywhere near reaching the Cape York Peninsula as a tropical cyclone, but uh, it could still arrive there as a remnant low, maybe even with a circulation. So that's the imagery on Paul. Still got some decent cloud tops in there and there will be some strong winds, but thankfully no land areas in the vicinity. Here's that other system in the South Pacific that we're looking at, a real mess right now, so not too much to talk about with this yet. Uh, but keep watching if you do watch this system around that western side, 
for a potential spin up to start occurring there as it, and then it will drift towards the southwest. And this is Olga looking dreadful. Uh, just a little bit of cloud near the center there, uh, but still it does have a center of circulation, but all the convection is long gone. Uh, it is going to be producing a little bit of rain down there further south towards the Carnarvon area, uh, but around Exmouth it's probably looking pretty decent, uh, calm, uh, but here's the rainfall on the radar as well showing you there is a stream of rain there moving down towards the south along the west coast there uh, which could be producing some locally significant rain. Well let's take a look at sea surface temperatures then the eastern pacific first of all looking decent of course where that system is those temperatures are pretty low around about 22 degrees celsius maybe a little bit higher so subtropical can't be ruled out the atlantic still looking okay as well certainly for the time of year it is warming up already 28 degrees in a few spots particularly near jamaica and down the, through the windward islands in the western pacific those temperatures are increasing as well up to close to 30 degrees near the philippine islands uh, not so high just yet in the open uh, western pacific but looking good all the way up through central taiwan Bay of Bengal, very hot right now, the Andaman Sea included over 30 degrees in a few spots and in the Arabian Sea in those low latitudes also looking very good. It's almost storm season in the Indian region so keep looking out for any signals. In the southwest Indian Ocean near Madagascar, temperatures still very hot there as well, 30 degrees plus off the west coast and around Mauritius those temperatures right now about 27 degrees. Off Australia, there's a little cool patch there where Olga has been. Uh, it is a little bit below average, but it's still decently warm and temperatures further north also looking good around the Cape York Peninsula, 30 degrees in one or two spots as well. South Pacific still looking quite hot as well, north of Fiji and there's very low latitudes at this area uh, near Samoa as well, but very warm there. New Caledonia, around about 27 degrees. Compared to average, which is also an important metric, it is cold off the west coast of Australia where Olga has been, but elsewhere in the tropics it is generally above average. Western Pacific riding close to the uh, normals line there, the Atlantic much above average, the Eastern Pacific above in the lower latitudes and below in the higher latitudes of the tropics. In the southwest Indian Ocean still very warm compared to normal, and in the South Pacific it is mostly warm, cold sea being a notable standout there for very warm waters. Oceanic heat content also looking good in the coral sea too really for the time of year. Uh, don't be fooled by those low colours, anything light blue towards green is decent. And in the eastern pacific, uh, decent amounts there as well it has to be said. Into the yellows there which we didn't really see until peak season last year. In the western pacific those are uh, energy amounts increasing as well in the Philippine Sea. So let's check the computer models then, the GFS over the next uh, 7 days, it's usually 5 days but for some reason I picked seven today on this chart, showing this central pacific system looking very interesting. You see that central core there forming almost independently of that wider uh, wind line uh, and that's something we really got to watch out for there with perhaps this embedded subtropical cyclone that ends up forming inside this. Of course it's not going to be a threat to land but it is going to be very interesting to watch over the next few days. Things like this have happened before on several occasions so it can't be ruled out. Paul on the far left there moving towards the northwest and that other system 20% near the bottom right there uh, doesn't have very much time at all to get itself sorted uh, and that's why it's a fairly low chance. Later on in the model run as well we start to get a new system, you sort of saw a wave moving across there from the east and starting to influence a new tropical cyclone that forms not too far from Samoa, um, much to the west of there actually, northwest of Fiji. Watching that system dip down south again and you just see Paul on the very edge of the screen moving towards the Cape York Peninsula as a remnant low. Well this is the Australian region rainfall expectations, you see that little orange flicker there towards the right, that's Paul's influence but after that nothing really is from Paul here, uh, it's all from just general rainfall and possibly that other tropical disturbance off the top end of Australia that doesn't look like it's going to form. Uh, but here we are looking at significant rainfall amounts across the northern reaches of Australia uh, looking on land, probably maximums of about 6 inches, 150 millimetres. Upper New Guinea and some of the mountainous regions as well, getting up to around 10 or 11 inches, that's over 250 millimetres. And where Paul is right now, up to 9 inches for those fish, because it's nowhere near land. 
Well, in the longer range, we are looking at some interesting shenanigans here in the South Pacific. Will there be a late season boom? Well, the GFS is certainly wanting that because within the next 10 days, we have two major cyclones, one of them being particularly powerful in between Fiji and Vanuatu. Zoe vibes, actually, looking at that. Not quite as strong, but the GFS does get that one down to 933 millibars, which is definitely mid to high end, maybe category four status there. Uh, and very powerful. Still too early to tell whether that will happen or not. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our products as well as our full season individual storm animations on request at any time. And are still waiting for Hone t-shirt, I can guarantee you right now, even if this thing does become a subtropical cyclone in the central pacific, it won't get a name. So this is these two storms in the silly range then continuing and one of them, oh dear, smacks into Fiji there with a very powerful um, intensity there, probably still category 3 and the other cyclone really gets a little bit stronger as well in the Coral Sea, taking advantage of those places that I was just mentioning, these areas with much above normal sea surface temperatures and quite a bit of oceanic heat content, certainly prime for stuff like this happening, so I'd definitely be on alert even though this is in the silly range is what we call it. Well, 10 years ago, I was at the National Hurricane Center and they were also looking at this storm and there it is, Cyclone Ita, which was peaking on this day. Uh, we gave it an intensity of 155 miles per hour, just shy of Category 5 status, and it was about to make landfall near that intensity on the Australian coast. Uh, perhaps you might call it a forgotten super cyclone uh, when it moved inland because people don't really talk about this one anymore. Uh, certainly didn't have as much uh, impact as similar storms in its uh, time period, such as uh, Yasi or even Marsha. Well then, let's take a look at where we're at then this year. That Paul is the 15th storm to form so far this year around the world. The first name in the Atlantic this year is Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Aleta. And in the Central Pacific, guess what? It's still Hone. 92 storms, usually in a year. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Iwinia. In the North Indian Ocean, it will be Remal. And some people getting a little bit suspicious that we might start to see Western Pacific activity fairly soon. Yep, uh, it can't be ruled out, but not yet. And in the Southern Hemisphere, the next name in Australia now is Robin. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, it's Hidaya. And in the South Pacific, it's still Peter. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow.